Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, an absolute pleasure to be invited to speak to you at this uh, fabulous uh, Impact uh, Conference. And um, can I just back what Frederick said, which is that I, I do think that actually the Swedish Chamber is one of the best international chambers in London. And can I have a show of hands of who is a member? Right, anybody who didn't raise their hands, see me afterwards. Uh, you've, you've got to join, guys, you've got to join. Um, I also want a, a big uh, shout out to uh, Helid. Uh, where is Helid? There she is, Human Dynamo. She she and her team have made this possible uh, and drive this agenda, uh, just to paraphrase Heineken. I think SEB is probably the best bank in Northern Europe. Uh, and if anybody disagrees, uh, come and join us and find out. Um, look, friends, um, I I've been uh, asked to speak a little bit about uh, the road to COP28 and, and Nick obviously uh, uh, mentioned uh, what we need to, to achieve. But I want to first take you back to almost two years ago in November 2021 in Glasgow. And at the time, you will remember that COVID was still raging. Economies were buffeted by the consequences of COVID. We had geopolitical differences breaking out everywhere. And yet, we managed to get, under the UK's presidency, almost 200 countries to agree to the Glasgow Climate Pact. And um, I do think, actually, we uh, achieved more in that than many people at the start thought was possible. Let me give you some highlights. We managed to get over 90% of the global economy to sign up to net zero, just about every single G20 country. When we took on the role of organizing COP26, we were at below 30%. We managed to get financial assets to the value of $130 trillion signed up to invest in net zero. We've got over 5,000 big international businesses to sign up to the UN's Race to Zero campaign, committing to go to, to net zero. And that number, by the way, has continued to grow to 8,000. For the first time ever, we managed to get language on phase down of coal. And you know, those of you who may have seen this two years ago will know there was a big wobble at the end and it was the most stressful time I have ever had uh, because it just needs one country to walk away from these negotiations. The whole thing falls. But we did. We managed to get language on phasing down coal into this. And what I am particularly proud of <coughs> is that this was the first COP where we had huge business representation. And some of you I know were there because you've told me. And I hope many of you will also go to COP28 in Dubai. And if you add all of them of uh, uh, their balance sheets delivering more money. We need to make sure that we get the private sector uh, to, to invest. Uh, and that is going to be part of the discussion. So the final thing I just want to say to you is that's all very well for governments to be to be asking for, uh, you know, to be making these commitments. But what is it that governments need to do for you? So I think the first thing is that that issue of political consensus in any country. And we do see that fracturing in some countries. And by the way, uh, you know, I've been pretty vocal uh, about uh, the, the speech that the Prime Minister made uh, a few days ago, but I do believe that we are maintaining that political consensus overall because we have that enshrined in law. Net zero is enshrined in law. Our carbon budgets are enshrined in law. We have to deliver on that. I think the second thing is you want long-term policy signals and some stability in terms of the, uh, you know, uh, the, the policies that we put in place. And of course, uh, you know, you've heard my views, some of you, on uh, where I think uh, we have gone uh, recently in the UK when it comes to, for instance, electric vehicles. I mean, you are investing for the long term. And I think it's absolutely vital that governments, wherever they may be, have to make sure that they stick to their policies that they put in place. Thirdly, investment in infrastructure, particularly the grid. There's no point saying we're going to expand renewables unless you get the grid up and running. And that's as important in this country as it is in any other. Uh, planning reform, absolutely vital. No point saying we need to get to net zero by 2050 if it's going to take years for any projects to actually get built. And finally, there's the financial incentives. Uh, we've got this sort of huge incentive in the US with the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, you've got the Net Zero Act in, in the EU. Uh, I, I personally think that in this country, we need to see a bigger response from the UK government uh, on this. But that needs to happen. It should be about carrot rather than stick, encouraging businesses to invest. And that needs incentives. And the very final thing I will say, because I'm out of time, is there is an electoral issue here. 
people across the world, whether they're in the UK or in Sweden, and you see this in polling, they care about this issue. They want governments to act. They want businesses to act. And so my message to you as a business community is, wherever you happen to be based, and many of you are multinationals, make sure you talk to your governments there. Tell them it's vitally important that they deliver on this and that the investment that you make is dependent on that. And I think if governments get that message, they will absolutely act. Thank you.